Welcome to Earmuff Audio. Pocket Size Audio plays for your enjoyment. I'm Sky Lowry. And I'm Aurora Richardson. Just a quick content warning. Some of our episodes contain adult themes which are not suitable for young listeners. We hope you enjoy. Should I get punished if I'm working late? Is it my own fault if I get raped? Cause I've read the papers, I've seen the news. People wanna know what clothes did she choose? getting chopped up more than I'd like to admit. Because I can't help but think, what would they do with me? Would they tie me up? Cook me? Put me in a stew? Bake? Beat? Dice? Deep fry? Flombe? Would they use all of me? What about my brains? Brains are an excellent source of protein, after all. Apparently, the texture is creamy, but firm. Like overly curdled yoghurt or a piece of lumpy tofu. I suppose when it boils down to it, I really don't like the idea of anything going to waste. Not that there's much of me. And fuck, would I even taste good? <laughs> of course I'd taste good. A little bit of seasoning, a little bit of salt. I now think it's slightly ironic that I'm carrying an organ donor card in my wallet. I consider throwing it out on the footpath, but I don't. That paperwork took fucking forever. And I've just been watching way too many serial killer documentaries lately. Plus, it's late. And City Mapper has just told me the N52 isn't coming for another 50 minutes. So naturally, I'm a little on edge. I try not to, but I can't help imagining my murder trial. The evidence, Your Honour. I present one organ donor card. I sort of imagine her to be played by Maxine Peake. The jury gasps. The deceased had clearly specified in writing what organs she was willing to donate. Therefore, my client was simply respecting the deceased's wishes and carrying out an act of civic duty. Don't forget the news headline after the court verdict. Chef gets night off cooking. Or chef gets night of cooking. Either or, really. I'm a chef. Well, chef in training. That's why I'm out so late. Unbelievably shit hours. But I find the chaos of it all oddly soothing. You'd be surprised how many questions I get about human flesh. I'm barely allowed to gut fish unsupervised. The last four weeks I've been put on vegetable peeling duty. All because of the unfortunate Arancini incident. Shit! I did, however, hear a story about a couple that trolled dating apps in order to find unsuspecting women to kill and eat. Because if you think about it, a dating app doubles as a pretty good catalogue for cannibals. It's just too much pressure for me, personally. I can't have someone judging my fuckability and my tasteability in one swipe. I have a fear of rejection! Another reason to avoid dating apps? Although... I do get slightly curious when an advert pops up on my laptop telling me that there are local singles in my area that want to meet me. Hello, big boy. Because, you know, it's been a while. But then I think, what if it's the other kind of meat? (sighs) I feel strange thinking about sex when I'm alone, especially late at night. I'm afraid my brain might emit signals sex signals, and people in the area could be notified, like you turn up on their radar type thing. Kind of like a great white shark being able to smell a spot of blood from hundreds of miles away. I'm going to stop thinking about sex just in case. Mm, Sex! (sighs) Okay, it's out of my system now. I glance down at my phone. The bus still says it's 50 minutes away. Time for an Uber, I think. Three times surcharge? Ugh! There goes tonight's wages. As I keep my eyes peeled for a grey Toyota Prius, I start to think about what I could do to make myself look less desirable. Because when I want to, I can look fucking good. However, there's also times where I'm desperate to avoid attention. Like right about now? I can see a group of men up ahead. They've just turned the corner and are slowly making their way towards me. Oh, I pray to God they don't come over and try to make small talk. Try anything for that matter. I suddenly feel the urge to pull my dress down over my knees. Not because I'm particularly cold, but because I've just remembered this Horrible Histories episode. Well, I think it was Horrible Histories. Where men in the Victorian era got raging boners whenever they saw uncovered piano legs. 
Okay, maybe they weren't raging boners. It is a children's show after all. Anyway, when the aristocracy were entertaining, they had to cover up the piano's legs for fear of a modesty or something. So all I'm thinking is that, well, if a piano's wooden legs can be slut-shamed, I'm pulling my dress down for good measure. Sometimes, if a group walks towards me underground or through a tunnel and I'm alone, I'll talk to myself like I'm a bit crazy. Seriously, the things I do to avoid being raped are astounding. I've considered peeing on myself. I've even thought about bringing a condom with me at all times, not because I want to have sex, but purely because there's a part of me that hopes I could convince them to wear one. You know, worst case scenario. I shouldn't be thinking these things, but I do. And I wonder if all women feel this way. That strange tingly feeling begins to spread across my body. There must be five of them in the group. I immediately feel outnumbered. I start to get my house keys out. I slowly run my fingers over them, feeling for the sharpest key. I don't know if those are footsteps I hear getting faster or just a fox rustling in the bin for scraps. Where is this damn Prius? I feel like a deer on high alert. Was A deer on a David Attenborough documentary? A group of men approach. The air is suddenly silent. It's just me, the men, and the moon. Ooh, I like that. Sounds like a good book. Focus. Okay, nothing is going to happen. Nothing is going to happen. Avoid eye contact, head down, look busy. <sighs> I'm in the clear. They walk past. My heart slows. A welcomed moment of reprieve? Why do I always think the worst is going to happen? I mean, it does happen. Here's my Uber, finally. Better text mum the details in case he's a weirdo or a pedo. I'm almost 30, but still. Those stranger danger lessons stay with you. He asked me how I am. Fine. He asked me where I've been. Work. He asked me if I want a mint. Creep. Wait, no, not creep. Nice, nice offer. Takes mint. Swallows it. Realises it could be laced. Mild panic. Stop being silly. The Uber driver did not lace your mint. Five minutes in. No mind-altering state yet. Ten minutes in. The driver takes an unfamiliar turn and my heart starts racing. Where on earth is he taking me? Uh, excuse me, this isn't the right way. I squeak from the back seat. He responds, saying not to worry, this way's faster. No worries, <laughs> I say. Well, I am worried. I am very worried. Text all my girlfriends on my phone, worried. Manically share my location, worried. I even think about texting my ex-boyfriend to see if he still loves me. <coughs> nah, I am not that desperate. I'm about to lose hope when out of my window I notice the beaming lights of my local chicken cottage. <gasps> oh, I'm saved. I glance at my phone. Wow. He's right, it really was faster. I close the door behind me and save the long taste of my free mint. 4.5 stars, tipped for expert navigation. No, nice and tidy. Home in one piece, with nice breath. Me one, murderer zero. Cause everyone has something to say. One Piece was written by Aurora Richardson and performed by Sky Lowry. The music and lyrics were also written and performed by Aurora and the beautiful artwork by Jamie Bell. Thanks for listening.